Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Nick Jacobs, and I gave his bio before episode one. It includes being the president and CEO today at the Clinical and Translational Genome Research Institute, but he's also been CEO of places like Winber Medical Center, Laurel Highlands Tourism, Laurel Arts. He's been in senior management at large places like Connemall. He's written the book, Taking the Hell Out of Healthcare. Nick, one of the stories I want you to tell us a little more about is the Winber Medical Center turnaround and the unique things you did there. I can remember one of them that I'll just jump on was just like, I think it was something about back rubs and hugs, and you, you made an emphasis on it, and you know some people thought it was hokey, but it actually made an impact. I know there was much more to it than that, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, and before we go in, go all the way there, I do need to say that I'm a partner in Sunstone Management Resources, which is well, how I'm allowed to be here today because they do pay my salary. Everything else you named is volunteer pretty much, so, you know, as far as my current other involvements. But, yeah, so uh, so I took over this hospital, and I have to tell you, I walked in, the walls were all Pepto-Bismol pink, and I went into the boardroom, and there was one-inch thick brown carpeting on the walls that had mildewed, and my office office was, it looked like a bad rendition of the Brady Bunch with all different color plastic furniture. And it was like, what am I going to do? I mean, they had tried to keep it open by cutting, 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 cutting to the point of where I used to joke that the, the toilet paper was wood pulp with big pieces of wood in it. <laughs> you know, it's like, how do we move this forward? And so bottom line was, I decided I had to embrace some things that would generate attention. And the first thing we decided to do was to become a plane tree facility. And plane tree was a national organization that had just gotten started. And I didn't need to do that, but it was it was giving us some kind of a relationship with some organization other than just the local hospital. And and their whole philosophy was taking the mysticism out of healthcare. And and so I began implementing philosophically, the things that I had always wanted to do. We started 24-hour visiting, for which you would have thought I said to the employees, bring your firstborn child in and I'm going to execute them because they weren't happy about that. And we started, you know, we started doing things like uh, pet therapy. Let, we, let me stop you for a second on that because I love the approach that you took and the whole f- point of demystifying is a major mantra of us at Mass Solutions because we feel so many times companies actually mystify their big idea oh, by sure. mistake. But well, I don't know talk, by mistake. I think they do it on purpose sometimes too. So with the visiting, just want to practically talk about it for one minute. The employees were ticked off because it was a change, but it wasn't like a lot of people were coming to visit at three in the morning. It just no. kind of meant if I wanted to come over at 10 o'clock one night, I was there. Yeah. But yet the employees complain because they were implying that it was going to be all hours of the night? Well, I think there was more to it than that. There's a great book by Alan Deutschman called Change or Die. And I had had to reinvent myself so many times by then uh, that I embraced change. And I believe that change is the only thing that's consistent in our life. It's the only thing we can count on. But for a lot of people, change is like, it's so difficult. And I mean, I've I know people with heart disease, and they'll say, look, if you just stop eating all that red meat and stop doing this and stop doing that, you're going to live longer. And they go, I'd rather die than do that. you know. And, mm-hmm. and so it was a great book for me because it basically just it embraced what I believed in. And I knew that that particular hospital had the first rural hospice that had ever existed in the United States, and they were so proud of it. And everything they allowed them to do in that hospice was basically what I wanted to do for the people that weren't dying. So it was. It, I I played off of that. I said, "Look, you love your hospice. Why do you have to be dying to be able to have visitors?" What a great point. Yeah, and so that helped me sell it. Now, what they didn't know was that I was basically taking the power away from the regular power holders and giving it to the patients and their families. So about two years into that, um, I came close to being killed, I'm sure. I mean, there were a lot of people that were not happy because we were basically, I had gotten a uh, an intern, administrative fellow from the Wharton School who insisted that he wasn't a bright guy, but he just couldn't ever forget anything once he saw it. He, mem- he, mem- he had it in his memory his whole life. He said, you know, one of my professors came up with this idea and I think we should embrace it here. And I said, what is it? He said, "We, you are creating not what people would like, you are creating what people will love. And that was it. And it was like, that's it. That's what I want to do. And so, you know, when it came time to design anything or to do anything, I got the people who had suffered through. For example, when we built the breast center, I got all the women who had survived breast cancer to design the building. 
with me. So I knew every pain and misery and awfulness that they had experienced, and we took it out of that equation. And, and it was the same thing when we did with the research institute. It was the same thing we did. We, we got double beds for the OB suites. Hill Rom went crazy. They'd never built double beds for an OB suite before. And I said, look, they made a baby together. If they want to be together as a family, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't a doctor. I wasn't a scientist. I, I just wanted people to get better. And so the crazy thing that happened about this, we introduced all this integrative medicine. We had we had massage therapy and aromatherapy and we had roving musicians and we had pet therapy and humor therapy, all these things going on throughout the whole hospital. And the crazy thing about it was about two years into that, we started seeing these statistics, which the, the, the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the Joint Commission questioned. We ended up out of the 18 peer hospitals having the lowest length of stay, the lowest return rate, readmissions. We had the lowest restraint rates. We had the lowest infection rates. Our infection rates dropped to below 1%. The national average is 9%. And I know we weren't washing our hands any more than anyone else. And it was like, okay, so what's causing this? Well, we're taking this terrifying place. We stopped the overhead paging. We stopped the unnecessary wake-ups in the middle of the night. I put all my employees through Disney training, Ritz-Carlton training, and through uh, IQ, uh, EQ training, emotional quotient training. And we made them pretend they were patients with each other. We'd wheel each other around in wheelchairs. We'd feed each other. And we sensitized them because what I saw in that world was that it might be your 475th tumor, but it's my first tumor. And they tended to be desensitized. They would say, oh, the, the brainer in 103 is dying or going sour. Those were the terms they would use. And it just was, it just disgusted me. I wanted to change that. And so that's what we did. And it ended up, we ended up tripling in admissions at our emergency room. And we ended up tripling in size. Um, we went from about 200 to 900 employees. I mean, it just exploded for us because people went there because they got what they wanted. I mean, there was actually deodorant for after you had your mammogram, you know, and we used mammo pads and we used hot water bottles. So it wasn't freezing cold when you got smashed in there. And we just, we, we created a mammography gown that only exposed one breast at a time that Today Show came and covered it live because they couldn't believe someone would be that sensitive to not make you stand naked from the waist up in a hallway to have your mammogram. You know, it's that kind of innovation that I that I attributed all to my music background because I just my door was always open and I always let people come in and talk to me. And how long were you at Wimber? Eleven years. How did the hospital do financially? It was um the average hospital our size was making about a two percent bottom line. We were making about a twenty one percent bottom line. So it really turned it and, and and it and it really worked. And at that time were you part of the Economo Health system? In and out. We in were out. we were in and then out um, because they got at the same time, in a parallel course, I got this idea to start the Research Institute and uh, was encouraged to apply for a grant, and I applied for a grant, and we ended up getting it, and we ended up creating a research institute that became literally internationally recognized because we brought in people from all over the world to do genetic studies on breast cancer, and we ended up collecting 100,000 donated breast tissue with 800 fields of demographics on each person that came in there. and. Patrick Sun Shung, the wealthiest physician in the world, just took the place over with his nonprofit corporation. So it's part of Moonshot 2020 now. It's given new life to the organization and to the area and to the town. And that was all kind of out of the box music thinking. Um, I, Whenever we started the Research Institute, I said, look, I I'm not a scientist. I want to do it as a musician. So I want to have ensembles instead of divas. I want to have Ensemble as a scientist. And we mixed the scientific groups up of different kinds of people. And I wanted to have a central data repository because I didn't want it all going into someone's computer where they could hide it from anybody else. And, and so we started w- working f- at it from a different, different perspective. And, and that's one of my great frustrations is that in order to make it in that world, you had to be a lifer in that world. But I looked at the successes I had and it was because I wasn't a lifer in that world. 
And I always say that being a band director and running a hospital were the same gig. They were the same job. They were just taller and less likely to cooperate. <laughs> um, because, you know, I always had to get the next best trumpet player. I always had to get the ne next best surgeon. I always had to have the right equipment. I, the band boosters were the board members. The majorette mothers were the auxiliary. The, it was the same. It was, you know, my drummers were driving my ambulances and my string players were my brain surgeons. And I mean, it was fascinating. It really was. Anyway. That's Nick Jacobs, and you're listening to the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. For you, the listeners of the No BS Marketing Show, Audible is offering a free download with a 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Try a book like The Everything Store, Jeff Bezos and the Age of Amazon that I'm about halfway through right now and hope to finish over the next couple of weeks. You can download it for free by going to audibletrial.com slash no BS. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash no BS for your free audiobook and free Audible trial. Nick, when it comes to messaging, we have to understand both our why or reason for being and our customers' why or reason for buying. And what happened to me uh, a few years ago was the Simon Sinek book really hit home with start with why and asking your why. And as I read that book, I thought as a CEO, I understand I have to have a why, our reason for being here at Mass Solutions. But for companies like mine and for people that work with Mass Solutions, they have to answer that second why, which is your customer's why or reason for buying. You take those two answers to those two whys and crystallize it into one big idea, one memorable message or theme that makes an emotional impact on our target audiences. So whether it's for you personally or your company, uh, Sunstone, or your nonprofits, or even maybe back when you did Wimber, or maybe it's just your life mission, what's your big idea? You know, I, my mother's philosophy, and I think it was Calvin, I'm not sure which one of the religious leaders, maybe the Methodist Church, I'm not sure which, because I was Quaker, Presbyterian, and Catholic, uh, but her philosophy of life was always do everything that you can for all the people that you can for as long as you can for, you know, was that kind of a just help people. And it's why I got into teaching. It's why I was in nonprofits for 40 plus years. And and part of my um, my desire was to take that idea and just to do good. That's really what I wanted to do. But I found that I couldn't do good. It's kind of like watching the conventions the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't cut through all the bureaucratic BS to do good until I was in a bankrupt organization. And once I was in a bankrupt organization, it, it allowed me the freedom to reach people in ways that I couldn't reach it. For example, the, my art center was going broke when I first started it. And I found a, a, a artist that was out of work. And I said, I need something that brings kids in here. And she said, well, I'm a tactile artist. So I gave her a part of the floor, uh, the room upstairs, and she built a tactile exhibit, which was a forest going through this hallway and it got smaller and smaller and smaller and it crawled through and you ended up in a cloud. And it was all leftover materials that we got from the Coleman Camper Company, but it was gorgeous. We ended up having Governor Thornburg crawl through the cloud with us. We had 2,000 students come and experience art in a way they never would have experienced it before. Well, my big idea in healthcare was why not be the best of a hotel, the best of a hospital, and the best of a spa? Why not bring in all those things that make it what people will love instead of what they're terrible? Terrified of, And why not embrace the fact that that woman that's been married to that man for 47 years knows that when he coughs, when he's sleeping, if you turn him on the other side, he's going to be okay. So make her part of the care team. And so all of these things came together in a way that for me just seemed crystal clear. But for everybody else, it was like, what? We don't do it that way. You know, I remember making a speech presentation to the VAs of Maryland. And it was a very exciting speech. And at the end, this uh, African-American woman came up to me. She said, you know, that, it was great. I love what you had to say. But, you know, in, in, in our world, if they don't do exactly the way we did it, um, we eat our young. And, and there's a poem by Samuel Foss called Calf Paths. I don't know if you've ever heard of this poem. But it's basically this medieval calf goes for a walk, and the next day a dog follows the trail that the calf made, and the next day a bellwether sheep with all the sheep follow the path, and the next day a man follows the path and complains the whole time but stays on this stupid path that this calf made. And then another man, and then another man, and then we pave it, and then we built cities around it, and we've all been on those roads. Well, our brains are full of calf paths. 
we're full of these things. It's like, why do we, why are we, why it's taking me three times longer to go this way, but it's the way everybody else always did it. And so I was of the belief that get off the calf path, you know, let's cut through what people will really, really love. And, and it's interesting because, you know, integrative medicine, there are now 70 some centers in the United States. I, that's what I do for a living. I put in integrative centers at places like Cedar sinai and Hackensack and Atlantic Health. And I'm working down on Lee Memorial and genomics and genetics. I, I, I feel like I was a, uh, somebody that Rob came in from the future or something. I, I'm like 15. I've been 15 years out ahead of the wave, but the wave's finally catching up because hospitals are not getting reimbursed if people aren't happy. They're losing part of their reimbursement. So I get these phone calls and they'll say, you know what, we're going to lose $23 million this year because our patient satisfaction scores were lower than the, than the prison hospital. You know, how can I fix it? Well, be good to your employees and they'll be good to your patients. You know, so those are the kind of big ideas that I have embraced. The No BS Marketing Podcast with Dave Mastovich is brought to you by Mass Solutions. Put our three-step No BS process to work for you. Visit MassSolutions.biz today to take your marketing to another level. It's all about bold solutions, no BS. A number of key points. The first ties to your situation when you said you were at the smaller hospital that wasn't doing well financially. One of my greatest experiences was when I came to a health system that had six days cash on hand yeah. because I was able to go talk to the surgeons and tell them what you're doing in this way. You're blocking the time off. Doesn't work. And yeah. we have six days cash on hand, so you're going to stop. We were able to talk to someone and say, you don't want to change what shift you work? Well, then you're out of a job because we have six days cash on hand. That's right. I also had the opportunity to jump in to do the turnaround of a couple of radio stations that were ranked 13th and 14th and losing a half million dollars. And it was exhilarating, like you described, because you could try the things you instinctively wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And those are two of the greatest successes of my life. What also applies to Mass Solutions is when you look at what you did at Wimber, it's very common to see this, and that's what I believe Mass Solutions' role is in the marketing economy. And why I say the marketing economy is I believe we're small enough to try a lot of novel things like a podcast, the CEO having his podcast talking to other CEOs, and yet we're big enough and talented enough to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that's an advantage for Mass Solutions and our clients because we're trying things and taking risks that the bigger ones just aren't going to take ever. Exactly. And you lived that with yeah. when you were with Winber and you were part of Conamon and not part of them because they were big and didn't want to take risks right. and you were taking risks. Right. And a lot of the stuff you talked about became pretty common. After, after your place. Well, everybody went out and bought a piano and put it in their lobby and said, oh, we do the same thing they do. <laughs> and assisted living facilities all did that. <laughs> but the piano wasn't the same thing we did. Right. You know, I mean, that's, it, it's interesting to me now because, like I said, it's catching on, you know, because, because they realize that if you, if you don't get good patient satisfaction scores, you're not going to get paid as well. And how about the fact that the infection rate dropped to below 1% and never came up in 11 years? The Joint Commission would come, but this is impossible. It has to be 9%. The national average is 9%. But I think when you give people a chance for their white blood cells to work, <laughs> I think they could fight off infection. I think that whenever they're put in a position where, you know, it's they're, they're not being just wheeled into a hallway and not told what's going to happen, but they're treated with dignity and respect. I mean, we used to give them pajama bottoms. We had bathrobes. You know, we did things to – you spend your whole life trying to uh, to get some dignity, and then you get thrown into a health care, and it's like, you know, leave your dignity at the door. Uh, and – and I just, I've never, ever, ever believed that's the way it should be, could be, or has to be. But um, I was an outlier. And when I wrote the book, Taking the Hell Out of Healthcare, I was basically saying, look, make sure when you go to a hospital, you have somebody with you because people make mistakes, you know, and, and, and make sure that you understand that these are the, these are your rights and your privileges and that you can demand this and you can negotiate this and you can do it because that it's, it was like to be a guidebook on how to survive in a hospital. So one of our guests was Bonnie Friedman. Yeah, I was Suzanne. just thinking the same thing. We should, we should connect her and mm -hmm. do a special show with Bonnie and Nick because they both have a wealth of information on trying to navigate the, yeah. the healthcare system. That's Nick Jacobs. Nick, you're with Sunstone Consulting. I want to make sure we have some time for you to tell us what happens there. And you also, are, we already mentioned your bio president and CEO of a number of places, but you're also involved in some nonprofit mm -hmm. type stuff. But talk about the Sunstone situation. 
Yeah, so it was interesting because Sunstone actually started in 2000, and that was at the time when I was beginning to get all my grants and and uh, all of my uh, contracts to do this research. And it, at that point, uh, there was a governor by the name of Ridge who wanted us to become an incubator for biotech and had uh, pretty much committed to put about $12 million into making that happen. And so we were looking at creating an environment where there would be like accountants and attorneys and, and, and then we would bring these biotech companies. We had seven biotech companies lined up to come in and then 9-11 hit and he left and everything changed and it didn't come. But Sunstone had wanted to get started that year. So they were the, we were the first person they met with. They were going to be part of us. Anyway, uh, eight years later, I announced I was going to retire from running hospitals because by then I had collected six stents and uh, heart stents. And so they approached me and they said, why don't you come to work for us? Because we think that President Obama is going to come in. He's going to put a single payer system in and there'll be no need to have a financial group that goes in and looks for all the things that are missed from all the other insurance companies if there aren't all the other insurance companies. So why don't you help us create, recreate ourselves? And of course, I went in and, and they didn't do it. I mean, you know, then it didn't happen. It didn't become a single payer system. But uh, I tried. I struggled for the first two years because it was 2008, 2009, and then I realized that th those enlightened CEOs that understood what integrative medicine would do for them, like it, like it did for me in terms of all of the wonderful outcomes that we got, um, would want me to show them how to do it. And that's when I got involved with uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, and I got involved with uh, the uh, Atlantic Health System in Morristown, New Jersey. We put a a uh, 20,000 foot square foot center in there with 85 uh, integrative practitioners. And uh, we put one in Hackensack with the New York Giants, 117,000 square foot facility. And I'm currently working in Cedar sinai and, and I'm doing genomics too. So we're putting uh, genetic centers in. And, and that's the uh, Clinical and Translational Genome Research Institute. Just real quickly, understand that there is a test that any one of us could take from a little bit of saliva that will tell you for your entire life what medicines you can or cannot take. It's there. It's been there. But nobody's using it because the doctors aren't trained in it. So my brother passed away last year. And one of the reasons he passed away is when they admitted him, he said, I don't respond well to uh, pain meds. And sure enough, within three days, they had overdosed him on pain meds and couldn't intubate him and destroyed his kidneys. That test would have told them which pain meds he could or could not have taken. And so I'm pushing hard to get that information and that test out into the healthcare systems. Because, it, I mean, if you ever listen to NPR in Pittsburgh, you'll see uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center come here. You'll never get the wrong heart medication. Well, that's pharmacogenomics. They make sure, I mean, one out of, I forget the number, one out of a thousand people, I'm not sure what it is, can't take statins. It'll eat, it'll eat your heart muscle. <laughs> so so wouldn't you like to know that? And the test is good for your whole life, and it costs like 100 bucks or 150 bucks. And it just, it's, it's heartbreaking to me that, it, you know, penicillin was invented in 27, I think, 1927, and we didn't use it till the war in 44, 45. So it's just, uh, it's there and it's available. Nick, pick a tool that will help our audience tell their story, craft their message, or communicate to internal and external target audiences. It could be a tool like Google Trends to generate content ideas, your favorite blog or productivity resource, whatever you think might help our listeners. You know, truthfully, I'm I'm old school from this perspective. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was the first hospital CEO to have a blog in the United States, so I'm not old school that way. And I had it since 2006. It's called HealingHospitals.com. Um, so if you guys want to read that, that's cool, HealingHospitals.com, because all my opinions are on there. But I'm old school from the standpoint of I got into, really got into pop psychology as a young man. And the books that really helped me uh, were, as I mentioned, I'm okay, you're okay, The Naked Ape by Desmond Morris and The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. And it, it was those things were very, they caused me to have a great deal of insight into the fact that we are emotional human beings and we make a lot of our decisions based on emotions. And how do we reach that and how do we interact with those people? And so that, that's kind of, that's where I live. The naked ape. Talk me. Talk to me about the that. guy was a zoologist his entire life, and decided at the very end of his career, Desmond Morris decided to write a book about us as animals. 
which we spend our whole life trying to hide the fact that we are animals, but we're animals. And in that book, all these things that he described was like, oh, that's why we do that. Oh, that's why this kid wanted to be a clarinet player, you know, because it was oral pacification. That's why this person can't stop talking like me for the last hour. You know, it's like, what what is it about us that makes us animal that's been there forever? And so it really helped me. And that's when I started doing emotional quotient training for my employees, because we all have these styles that we live within. And if you understand that person's style, then you can deal with it. But if, if someone comes in and starts to yell and scream at you, you don't realize that's w- what their style is, you fall apart or you attack them or at least all kind of problems. So th- that's, that's, well, it hel- that's what helped me. That's how I did it. Good stuff. Nick, it's time to keep calm and hit the bullseye. I'll ask you to choose between two marketing or messaging classics. You tell me which one you like more and why, but you only have a few seconds to choose and hit the bullseye. Geico's Gecko or the Aflac Duck? I love Geico's Gecko. I just... He's a little guy, and he, he he's proud of it, and he and he just keeps making it happen. It doesn't matter. He's like people could tramp on him. He handles it well. He's got his own little suitcases. I like that guy. I just think he's he, he's David and David and Goliath to me. I love having that one in the hit the bullseye, and the reason I do is because both of these companies sell bland products, and they stand out in their space because of their messaging, because they both took a risk yeah. and did things that at the time didn't seem like they made a lot of sense, but that's why that one is typically our first hit the bullseye. Yeah. Since you have such a tie to healthcare, we're going to go with some healthcare messaging and two titans in Pennsylvania. UPMC, Life Changing Medicine, or Allegheny Health Network, Health for All? Allegheny Health Networks is based on population medicine, and that's something that we're going to either have to do or we're going to bankrupt our country. Uh, Life Changing Medicine obvious, is obviously what UPMC does. I'm, I'm going with Allegheny on this one because I really think that the whole area needs to be getting to think begin to think about you know, what is savage capitalism that's killing us and what is social capitalism that's helping us? And, and we're fighting a food industry. We're fighting a lot of different things. And I, I think that a population health message is, is, is essential for the future of the United States. Now, that's a good bullseye. A lot of times characters are used in marketing and a lot of times they're used poorly. So I like to have one with human characters in it as our hit the bullseye, and that's Progressive's Flow or Jake from State Farm. I, I love Jake from State Farm. I kind of look like him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just cracks me up. I just, I love Jake from State Farm. I, 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 he brings such humanness to it. And um, I think we've all been in situations like that where we've been called up by a spouse or whatever. I, I just, he, he does it for me. I love both of them, yeah. and I get your point on Jake. They both have really helped their company so much, and they become iconic. You see Halloween costumes of both mm-hmm. every year. MasterCard Priceless or Visa everywhere you want to be? I mean, I think Visa's, Visa hits it right on the nose there because it it's everywhere, and you need to know that. And I've been to Europe. I've been to Africa. I've been to Serbia. I've been to Bosnia. Visas everywhere. And so I, I think that's an important message, you know. I choose that one because messaging, one major tenet of messaging is you have to make an emotional impact. And everywhere you want to be makes an emotional impact, and so does Priceless. But it also tells you a story there because they are everywhere. Indeed. Nick Jacobs been a fantastic guest. Nick, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Yeah, real quick, I wanted to tell you an ad campaign that I ran. It was called Surprised Don't Be. And we would literally stand by a a, um, a freezer that was at 180 degrees below centigrade and open it up and, and you'd see the smoke pour out of it with, with all of these tissue inside. And we would say, you know, what's the number one blah, 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 research institute in the world and such. A, and I'd walk into the picture and I'd say, it's Winber Medical Center. Surprise, don't be. Because it really was not what anybody expected in that area. And so it it went against the tide in a positive way. So I like that one. <laughs> That's some serious, strong messaging. <laughs> Nick, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do? I mean, I'm on, I'm everywhere. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on healinghospitals.com. I'm, um, 
I write for some newspapers. Um, so Nick Jacobs at sunstoneconsulting.com. Those are all ways you can reach me. Uh-huh. I'm very reachable. And you're on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm Facebook. I'm I'm, on, I'm F. Nicholas Jacobs on Facebook because my son is Nick and he didn't want me to take his. Mm-hmm. And and if you Google me, at Nick Jacobs, F-A-C-H-E, fellow in the American College of Healthcare Executives, because there were several other Nick Jacobs, some of whom are uh, strippers and other things. So this is a <laughs> <laughs> this clarifies that I'm not that one. <laughs> Excellent. Nick, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for the No BS Marketing Show. Visit MassSolutions.biz slash Bold Solutions for show notes plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Are you signed up for light reading? You'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? and build your story around the answer. It's all about bold.